I am not a pitcher to blow people away with my blazing speed. I move the ball around, hit spots, catch batters leaning the wrong way, bust their bats with an inside pitch. I'm not a pitcher who frustrates batters because they're so sure they'll get me until, what do you know, they've gone zero for four. The Cincinnati Reds did not give me the game out of sympathy, even if they were touched by my comeback. We were in a pennant race. On August 10, we were in first place by two games, and the Reds wanted to beat us. One of the sports writers asked Pete Ross, the Cincinnati manager, whether he thought about the difficulty of what I was trying to do. Pete spit out a sunflower seed. No, he said bluntly, he's back, and it's great for him. I hope he loses. The first hitter of the Reds was the hustling second baseman. I started him off with a pitch high and outside, ball one. That set up the fastball inside. He turned on it hard and smashed the ball down the third baseline, but he had pulled it foul. I thought he would be looking for that inside pitch again, so I went low and outside with my backdoor slider and picked up a strike. The count was one and two. Much to my advantage. That's the way I like to pitch. Throw strikes, get ahead of the batter, and make every pitch a pitch of purpose. The purpose of the next pitch was to get him swinging at a bad pitch. With two strikes, he was vulnerable. But he laid off a slider outside. I came back with the same pitch, only closer to the plate. I just missed the outside corner, and he took it for a ball. I think the call could have gone either way. I now had a full count. I'd gone outside with three straight pitches, so I went there again. I thought he might still be thinking of that inside pitch. He'd fouled off. I put my slider on the outside corner of the plate, just slicing a piece off the very edge. He had to dive down to get it, and all he could do was pop a fly ball into center field. One out, the cheers rained down. The second batter went quickly. I started him out with a fastball inside and then came back with another one, which he grounded right at Matt Williams at third base. Eric Davis was the third man in their lineup, one of the toughest hitters in baseball. I missed with my first two sliders outside. Behind in the count, I needed a strike. If in doubt about what to do, keep the ball down. I threw a sinking fastball over the plate. Davis hit the ball solidly, but on the ground. Matt Williams, with those wonderfully gentle hands of his, gobbled it up and threw across the diamond for an easy out. As I ran into the dugout, the crowd stood for another standing ovation. That's how it went through seven innings. Every time I trotted in from the mound, the crowd stood to cheer. Roger Craig said later that in all the decades he'd played and coached, he'd never seen so much emotion at a game. I had near-perfect control. Only four times did I go to three balls on a batter. I walked only one toward the end of the game, and I entered the eighth inning having given up just one hit. In the meantime, my guys were giving me the support I needed. Got a run in the second inning, then another in the third. The score became 4-0 to zero in the fifth. Kevin Mitchell walked, and Matt Williams crushed a, crushed a first pitch fastball into the left field seats. It turned out that I needed those runs. In the seventh, I began having some control problems. The ball began coming up. I didn't give up a hit, but I had to throw a lot of pitches. Nobody particularly noticed. 
When you go into the eighth having given up only one hit, the manager is not thinking about pulling you. I started off the eighth, eighth inning by breaking Todd Binziger's bat. Unfortunately, the ball lopped over his fists over second baseman Robbie Thompson's head for a single. One of those little things again, a fluke hit, and almost dangerously a leadoff hit. Their catcher was next. My first pitch to him was out over the plate, a pitch he might have hit a mile, but he didn't have a good swing at it. He hit a routine fly ball to left field, one out. The rookie third baseman, Scott Madison, came up next. I threw exactly the same pitch, and Madison killed it. It bounced off the wall and left, and he coasted in with a double. With men at second and third and just one out, Pete Ross pinched hit Ron Oyster. Oyster gave me a tough at bat. We battled to a three and two count, and then he swung and missed a backdoor slider. The crowd roared. I pumped my fist. Two outs. One more, and I was out of trouble. Luis Quinius was up. The count went to two balls and one strike. When I threw him my bread and butter pitch, a backdoor slider. It wasn't a terrible pitch. It was up a little. It didn't break much. Quinius, who is no big slugger, turned on the ball and got all of his bat on it. The little white pill sailed high and deep to left, and I watched it with a sinking heart. It went over the chain link fence in left field. I felt sick. One bad pitch and a four-run lead was reduced to one. It had happened so quickly that Roger didn't even have a relief pitcher warming up. I went ahead and pitched to their shortstop, who grounded weakly to short. Going into the dugout, I got another standing ovation. I knew it was done. Sure enough, our manager pinch hit for me and called on Steve Bederosian, our stopper, to pull the game out of the fire. When Bederosian went to the mound to warm up, the crowd started yelling. It took me a minute to realize that they were cheering for me. They wouldn't stop. Terry Kennedy yelled over the den, Go on out there. It's your day. Take a bow. He nudged me. Come on, get going. So I did. I went out on the field, looked up again at those rows upon rows of fans yelling their lungs out, and I lifted my cap. It was my 12th standing ovation of the day. I went back into the dugout, but the fans still wouldn't stop. They seemed to ch to need to cheer, to pound their hands together and let out some emotion. They w wanted me again. Some of the guys were gesturing at me. Go out again. Come on, Dave. I walked up the steps. I looked up again at the thousands upon thousands of people whom I would never know but who shared that moment with me. I lifted both my hands to the fans and thanks. But Erosian was full of fire. He threw heat. In the heart of the Reds lineup couldn't handle it. Eric David Davis grounded a short. Herm Win Winningham struck out. Ken Griffey, Ken Griffey struck out. Like that, the game was over. I was on my feet before the last swinging strike. Terry Kennedy grabbed me for a hug. Other te teammates were grabbing me, slapping me on the back, congratulating me on the game. Will Clark was one of the last to reach me. He opened his arms for a great big embrace. The fans still cheered, yelling as though they'd never stop, even as I walked off the field. I got ice wrapped on my arm and went to the press conference. Everybody who was anybody in the world of news and entertainment was there. When I got 
up, the room was quiet. I realized almost as soon as I began answering questions that I had something I needed to say. Before I take any more questions, I said, it's important for me to give credit where credit is due. I want to give praise and glory to Jesus Christ for allowing me the opportunity to come back and play again. I went on to credit my doctors, my therapists, and my trainers, and all the others who had made it possible. But I tried to make clear that my comeback was a miracle for which God deserved the praise. They asked me about my future. How did I feel? What about the rest of the baseball season? I told the reporters that I hoped to be able to pitch normally from that time on. I feel great, I said.